Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over another problem involving free fall kinematics, and this video is part two of the three-part series, and in this video, we're going to determine the total time it takes for an object when it is launched from a known height with a known initial velocity to go up and come straight back down to Earth. In part one, we determine the total height or the final height of the ball, the object, and in part three, we determine the final velocity or the velocity that the object would have down here once again when it's launched with a known initial velocity at a known height. But this is part two. In part two, we're going to determine the total time that the object will be in the air when it's launched with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. And it goes straight up, stops, and comes straight back down to Earth. And we want to know how much time will it take for the ball to go up and back down when it's launched from a known height of 17 meters with a known initial velocity of 15 meters per second. As we have done in all of our kinematic problems, we like to write down all five of the variables that are contained within the kinematic equation. That's the initial, the final velocity, the change in position, the acceleration, and the time. And then we're going to fill in what we know and what we don't know. We know, obviously, the initial velocity is 15 meters per second. For kinematic free fall problems, we know that the acceleration due to gravity, the acceleration of the object is going to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Negative because the acceleration vector points down in the negative direction. The change in the position of the object is minus 17 meters per second. Don't forget your negative signs. The object starts right here. We usually designate that as zero. It's going to end up down here. Minus 17 meters is the change in position of the object. Okay, we're trying to find the time. We're not given in this problem the final velocity. In this problem, part two, we're not going to find the final velocity. But once again, you can see we have been given three variables. We're asked to find a fourth, and therefore, we can use our kinematic equations. This is the information we were given on the previous slide. We're going to find the total time the object was in the air. We are going to get out our kinematic equations. We are looking for the time. Which equation should we use? Well, this equation down here doesn't even have the time in it. We cannot use that equation. In order to get the right equation, it has to have what we're looking for, time, 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 but also contained within the equation has to be the other three variables that we know, namely the change in position, the acceleration, and the time. Okay, now in this equation, you can see here's the time which we're looking for, but this equation has the final velocity. We don't know the final velocity, so we cannot use this equation. This equation has the time and also the final velocity, so we cannot use that equation. This is the equation. Because we're looking for the time, it has the time in it. We know the other three variables, acceleration, initial velocity, and change in position. So this is the equation that we're going to use. The change in position is equal to the initial velocity times the time plus one-half acceleration times the time squared. Now for this problem, what we're going to do, we're simply going to plug in the values that we know. We know the change in position is minus 17 meters. So that's minus 17. I'm going to leave the units off, give me more space, it keeps the equation a little simpler. The initial velocity 15 times t, so that's plus 15. I put plus for emphasis because this is negative, this is positive, 15t, plus 1 half at squared. The acceleration is minus 9.8. That means 1 half of 9.8 is 4.9. It's minus 4.9 t squared. Now you can see we have the makings here of a quadratic equation. t squared, t, and a constant. So I'm going to bring this t squared, this term, and this term over to the other side. Minus 15 from both sides plus 4.9 t squared. And we get that 4.9 t squared minus... 15t minus 17 is equal to 0. This is our minus 17. Okay, now you can see we have a quadratic equation. 
we're going to get out our quadratic formula, which is that t is going to be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Okay, we have this term is a, 4.9, b is minus 15, c is minus 17, minus b, b is minus 15, that means that minus b is going to be equal to 15 plus or minus the square root of b squared. b squared is going to be 225, negative 15 squared is 225. Then we have minus 4ac, a is 4.9, c is minus 17 divided by 2a, 2 times 4.9. All right, now we're going to do our math here. And we're going to solve this. We get that t is equal to 15 plus or minus the square root of 558 divided by 9.8. Continue with that, taking the square root of 558. We get 15 plus or minus 23.6 divided by 9.8 again. And we solve this, we get that t, if we use the plus sign, is 4 point, excuse me, 3.94 seconds. If we use the negative sign, t is going to be equal to minus 0 0.88 seconds. Now we're looking for the time. This is the time, the positive value. The negative value has to do with some, if we were to launch the ball from the surface. Okay, we're not launching the ball from the surface. We're launching the ball from this height. So we're going to use, in this case, the positive value, which is going to be 3.9 four seconds. So if we launch an object from a known height of 17 meters with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second, it will take 3.94 seconds to go up and come back down to the surface like that. Okay, so our final answer is 3.94 seconds. All right, so you can see we followed all the steps we have in the past. We wrote down all of the variables. We filled in what we knew, what we didn't know, what we're looking for. We chose the correct kinematic equation. We plugged the values in. In this case, we used the quadratic formula. We solved for time. We got the correct answer with the units. All right, there you go. Follow those steps. You can do that also. Okay, watch your steps. Watch your negative signs, quadratic formula. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, you can do all of the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent chemistry, physics, and math videos. Give me a positive, nice positive comment in the comment section and a thumbs up down below also. You can also link here to part one and also part three in this three video series. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.